The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Electric Vicuna Productions presents Phil Morris, Celestial Lawyer, written and directed by Jack J. Ward. Why do I get all the jobs from hell? My ankles are killing me. Could have worn me to wear sneakers or something. Well, that sounds promising. Phew, should have brought a fan. It's murderous out here. Hello? Hello? Yes? Sorry to bother you while you're working. Uh, no problem. Sorry I didn't hear you before I get like that when I'm getting into my work. Takes a bit to get into the swing of things. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I know exactly what you mean. You were saying? Oh, sorry. I'm told they tend to babble a bit. Don't rush a mic out. Silence, worm! It's all right. Uh, how can I help you? You happen to know if this is Phil Morris, the lawyer here? Hmm. Damned if I know. You! Worm! What's your name? I'm... I'm Phil Morris. Huh. I guess he is. Do you mind if I speak with him a moment? Well, I'm not really supposed to. Oh, I've got the papers. Don't worry, I wouldn't let you get into trouble. Here. Hmm. Looks in order. How long you need? Not long. Not long at all. Go get a coffee. Well, I... I haven't had a coffee break in at least 20,000 years. Sounds like you're about due. Coffee tastes like crap, though. We have the same problem where I work. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. No problem. Oh, uh, could I have that back? Uh, sure. It's just, uh... Yes? Well, the line at the latrine's long enough as it is without paper. Sounds like hell. Yeah, it's a living. Take care. Gotta be hard walking on the gravel in those pumps. You could twist an ankle. You got that right. Mind if I sit down? My dogs are killing me. Help yourself. Thank you ever so much. So, Mr. Morris, I'm here to present you an offer. I'm listening. First of all, you are the Philip Morris Barrister from Boston, Massachusetts, previous address 331 Gray Avenue, Suite 4219. Yeah? Man, it's hot. Everyone talks about it, but until you're actually here... Where was I? Oh, yes, well, according to the Covenant of Celestial Holdings and Sole Propriety Ownership Rights Agreement, all lawyers who fulfill their judiciary responsibilities are outsourced to hell at the end of their mortal term. Yeah... Hence why we're here. Look, uh, Miss... Lazarus. Really. Lazarus. Oh. Well, Miss Lazarus, every day that demon you just sent off on a coffee break relentlessly tears me apart with that whip. And of all the demons I could get, I get assigned to be one who's fastidious about his job. He takes his time. Do you know how long a day is here in hell? Uh... Sorry. No. Damn. That's the point. Yes. Well, as far as I can tell, I'm still on day one. Like I said, my demon torturer friend over there enjoys his work. If this were a regular work week, I'd say he's put in about 80,000 days of overtime. Not that I think they pay overtime here. Something about the conservatives winning the election. At any rate, he likes overtime. It took him ten weeks to finish my left shoulder. 
When he gets back, he's going to forget where he left off and start all over again. So I don't mean to be rude, but I'd really appreciate you getting to the point. Of course. I'm so sorry. Where was I? Lawyers go to hell when they die. Right. Gotcha. To make this long story short, we need your professional services. Go on. We need you to represent God in a very important case. Okay. But we can't pay you anything. You want me to represent God in an important court case. And you want me to do it pro bono. Are you trying to torture me? Well, you'd be away from here for a while. I just need my briefcase. Already waiting for you. Oh. Whenever you're ready. Oh. Shouldn't we wait for... Oh, don't worry about him. He's still in line for the loo. You'll be back before he's done. Oh. Oh, good. This way. Justin Puffer. This place is hell in the sinuses. Who would have thought? I'm sorry. That wasn't a very nice thing to say. That's okay. You've been damned for some time now. I should be more sensitive. Thank you. Don't mention it. Here's the elevator. Elevator? Maybe part of an elevator. The doors don't go anywhere. Looks like set pieces dropped from the sky and left a crater when they fell. Actually, that's pretty much what happened. Are you coming in? I'm not defending God on an elevator liability case, am I? So, your name is Lazarus. Yes. The same from the Bible. Uh huh. I thought he was, well, a guy. Yep. Sorry, uh, just, well. No, that's okay. It's a long ride up. I should wear tear sheets or something. I've told this story so often. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. Can I trust you to keep a secret? Who would I tell? Honestly, that demon guy back there? I barely know him. It's just... No one asked me. Asked you? You know, asked me. It's not like Jesus asked me if I wanted to be resurrected. No. No, he just said, Lazarus, awake, and boom, an eternal slumber amongst the clouds, gone. How'd you? I wasn't a lawyer. Oh. Oh, don't be like that. It's not like you had to be a lawyer. You could have, well, taught preschoolers. Sounds like hell. Oh, it is. But at least you get it all done with before you die. Anyway, so there I was, called out by Messiah. It's not like you have a choice. When the King of Kings asks you to walk, you walk. I see. And then, just try to die after you've been resurrected. Have you ever tried to die after being resurrected? No, I can't say that I... Well, let me tell you, life's no picnic. I mean, sure, you're the life of the party the first 20 or 30 years, but when everyone else dies around you, and you just keep going, never aging, held together by holy commandment, it gets boring. I guess. I can't die. Can't get sick. So I'm a perfect gopher for anything heaven wants. Really? Yes. You wouldn't believe the stuff they have me do. Go find out if this place is cursed. Go locate a missing angel. Go get God pizza. Get God pizza? Yeah. He could make it himself, but he likes his anchovies cooked just right. Sounds like hell. Well, hmm, not really. No. I guess that gets overset, doesn't it? I don't mean to complain, but it's hardly fair. All these people fitted for clouds? I barely even got to pick out Camptown races on my heart before I'm snatched back into service again. Can't you ask for a vacation? Well, I do get breaks. I really need my downtime. And the woman thing? Oh, well, since God has a plan for me, I asked for it. I figured 2,000 years as a man was enough. Time to see how the other half lives. How's that working out for you? Actually, I feel kind of moody. I don't think we should be talking about this. Me neither. Wow. 
Is that glass? I'm not really sure what to call it. I don't think it's actually in the material world. Well, it looks like glass, with a kind of red swirl. Or purple? Blue? It changes. Wow! Yeah. Mr. Morris, how pleasant to see you. Well, hello, little girl. Are you lost? Phil? I used to keep candy for times like this. Phil? You're not lost, are you? I'm kind of new to this place myself. Phil! What? Please allow me to introduce you to your creator. You mean... Yes. She's? Please, Philip. The sense of awe really does tire one after a while. But you're a little girl. Actually, it's rather interesting how you perceive me. I... I... perceive? Don't we all see God in our own way? Y- yes but... Please follow me, Philip. We're about to begin the session. I just wanted to meet you before we began. But I don't know anything about the case involved. You know enough. As presiding judge, I really can't talk about it with you ex parte. But I... Lazarus will have everything for you ready. But... Won't you, Lazarus? Of course, Lord. This is where we part company. Again, I'm afraid, Philip. I... I don't know if I can do this. This is a whole lot to ask of someone in a short... Philip... Not to sound blasphemous. That's not really possible, is it? No, Lord. I have faith in you, Philip. You'll do your best. That's all I ask. See you in session. That was... I know. And I just... Sounded like the world's biggest groupie? (laughs) Don't worry. God's used to that. So many people ask the same questions all the time. We go in the door around the other side. Why is there suffering? Why do bad things happen to good people? You know, but at least there's an upside. What's that? No autographs. That's quite the courtroom. You like? Well, I guess I expected the cathedral ceilings, but it looks like the whole court was fashioned out of stone. Well, this is heaven. You can't expect the celestial court to be made out of cherry wood. I guess not. Are we the first ones here? The others will be arriving soon. That's them now. What? But I just... But I haven't even... Unlike the mortal world, the courts run rather swiftly here. How am I gonna... You've got about ten minutes. Impossible. I'll need... Our eyes. I thought you said... Ten minutes before a decision is rendered. Ten? The Honorable Celestial Majesty God presiding. Thanks so much, Samuel. Please continue. Be seated, everyone. The case of Kenneth Barry Montrose Jr. against the Heavenly Judiciary. Ken Montrose. Ken Montrose. Why does that name sound so familiar? He used to be one of your clients. Oh, right. Wealthy guy. Stinking rich, right? What's the case? Mr. Montrose, are you here in the court? Yes, Judge. Could you please, for the record, explain your suit? Yes, Your Honor. My name is, as you said, Ken Montrose. I am suing the Heavenly Judiciary. They have no right to send me to hell for a life badly lived. On the grounds that God does not exist. You've got to be kidding me. Your Honor, does this mean we're all going home? Mr. Morris, you are out of order. But Your Honor, you can't possibly... Ken, remember me? Phil Morris? You can't win. The judge is God. Mr. Morris, that will be quite enough. The plaintiff is allowed to present his case as he sees fit. This court will not prejudice his suit in any way. Permission to approach the bench? Both parties may approach. Your Honor, this case is ridiculous. That will be determined in due process, Mr. Morris. I have every right to be heard. But it's obvious God exists. I mean, you're the magistrate. Only currently. And my duties as a judge must outweigh my responsibilities as the creator here. And if Mr. Montrose wins... Then, of course, there will be an injunction served to the heavenly judiciary. What does that mean? It means that heaven and hell will cease to exist. God, God will cease to exist. You can't be serious. Step back, please. Your opening statement, Mr. Montrose. Your Honor, I admit that there have been persistent rumors about the existence of God since man went from crawling on the earth to his first steps walking upright. But, 
for all the vaunted accomplishments of this supreme being, we've never had a definitive proof of his existence. Her existence. Excuse me, counsel? Uh, sorry? You have an objection. Oh, uh, yes, your honor. I object. The plaintiff has no proof that God's presence isn't everywhere. Counsel? I have no proof that the Easter Bunny isn't everywhere either, Your Honor. But the court of law isn't interested in belief, only fact. Fact dictates that there is no empirical proof of God's existence on Earth. Objection overruled. There is no empirical proof of the existence of God. Please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Scientific methods have gleaned that existence couldn't have been created in seven days. Objection! Yes, Mr. Morris? If the plaintiff is going to quote the Bible for reference, he cannot dismiss it. Mr. Montrose? A little leeway, please, Judge. I'm providing background. Please be brief. Uh, Certainly, Your Honor. As I was saying, existence couldn't have been created in seven days. Nor is the earth saddled on the back of a turtle. These are tales we tell our children and ourselves to try to explain the mysteries of the universe. Your point is taken. Please move on to the specifics. Very well, Your Honor. So naturally, when I found myself, after a long life of industry and capital, in a lineup at the gates of this establishment... Objection! The plaintiff is describing his actions after death. Granted. However, my health is not a question here. We're speaking about my... But if you are dead, then logically there is life after death. And a god. Mr. Morris, you will address the court and not the plaintiff directly. Your Honor, if I may, are there not many belief systems that are non-deistic? Buddhism, for example, has provisions for an afterlife without any requirement of a supreme being. Objection overruled. The officer who identified himself as St. Peter explained to me that I was not allowed into this fine city. St. Peter showed me a book which contained my name and does so without my expressed consent, requiring me to go to the pits of hell. Naturally, understanding my rights, I demanded some kind of mediation. I was placed in a holding facility, limbo, to await trial. I've been waiting there until now. And what recompense are you requesting, Mr. Montrose? I believe that an injunction needs to be placed on St. Peter and his entire operation. Without proof of this supreme maker, judging a soul is cruel and an unusual punishment. What gives them the right to relegate people to a fiery hell or a heaven based on their own arbitrary morality shtick? Do you have anything more to add, Mr. Montrose? Uh, No, Your Honor. I sit here a man, accused by those who have no authority. What I ask, I ask not for myself, but for all those who are toiling, yearning for freedom. He's good. Melodrama always plays well with the crowds. Mr. Morris, Mr. Morris, your response. Your Honor, a moment, please. So why am I doing this again? What? I mean, if Montrose wins, all the souls from hell will be released. I'll be released. I mean, I'm going right back there when I'm done here, right? Phil, you can't be serious. I get the alternative. Eternal nothingness versus eternal torment from a demon who frankly hasn't even told me his first name. And the destruction of heaven, hell, and God? Yeah. Well, a client is a client, right? I'm ready, Your Honor. Please continue. Your Honor, of all the published books in the world, there is one that shines above all the others. Whether you believe in its tenets or not, the Bible contains the strictures and guidelines outlining... Objection! Yes, Mr. Montrose. I may have a copy of the World Daily News that explains the four hamsters of the apocalypse, but that doesn't make it a fact. If we're speaking about faith... I believe the origin of species uh, to be sacrosanct. The court recognizes that there is no special and unique truth to the document known as the Bible. And furthermore, what of Hinduism, Sikhism, and other holy texts 
Are they, too, to be relegated to the rubbish heap of history? Mr. Montrose, you are pressing the good nature of this court. Uh, my apologies, Your Honor. Mr. Morris will continue to provide fact to this court. We will hear only testimony that is relevant to this case. What can I do? What? Are you just giving up? Mr. Morris? I can't enter faith as evidence. I can't even bring up famous religious leaders of the past. Anyone can say they've met God. No one's believed them in the 20th century, and most people thought they were crazy through history, too. Phil, everything has a reason. God doesn't make mistakes. Mr. Morris! Well, she made one today. How do I prove God exists? There's no legal myth. Mr. Morris! That's it. I apologize, Your Honor. I call Mr. Montrose to the stand. Mr. Kenneth Barry Montrose to the stand, please. Mr. Montrose, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I will answer the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, upon the life of my soul. That will do, Samuel. Thank you. You are Kenny Montrose. Kenneth Montrose. I am. You're a wealthy man, Mr. Montrose? Is that a question? Let me rephrase. Are you a wealthy man, Mr. Montrose? No. No? No. I was a wealthy man. Uh, but uh, possessions are, as they say, uh, fleeting. <laughs> yes, they are. They are indeed. Could you estimate for the court your net worth, previous to your being deceased, that is? I don't really have the list of my holdings. Just an estimate, please. Oh, approximately... Uh, $137 million individual net worth. A pretty penny's worth, isn't it? Certainly. Was one of your companies involved in real estate, Mr. Montrose? Of course. Excellent. And did you have any personal property of your own? Yes. One house? Two? I had several estates. Excellent, excellent. Just to be clear to the court, we know each other, don't we, Mr. Montrose? Yes. And what was the nature of our relationship? Professional. You employed my firm for several court cases, is that true? Yes, and all our legal work. In fact, you made quite a penny yourself from our business. So it's safe to say that we had a good working relationship? I never had any complaints. And therefore you don't believe there to be a grudge between us now? No. Just making sure that you don't believe there's a conflict of interest? Only if you lose. And... I won't mind. That last outburst will be stricken from the record. Do you have a question, Mr. Morris? Yes, Your Honor. I do. Did you own beachfront property in California? Yes. Uh, there was a house we had in Malibu. And were there any problems with this house? No. Well, we did have extensive damage at one point. Extensive damage? Was it fire? No. A hurricane came through and tore off part of the roof. Did you pay for it? No. I believe insurance took care of that. Strangely enough, I have the document right here. Is this your signature on your insurance claim? Yes, that's my signature. It is. Well, Mr. Montrose, just one more question. When you signed this document to have your house rebuilt... Were you defrauding your insurance provider? No, of course not. I've never done such a thing. Then, Your Honor, I move for an immediate dismissal of the charges. What? Signed here, on this document, Mr. Montrose has collected under the Act of God clause. Making a fallacious claim is against the law, and Mr. Montrose has just admitted that his claim was in order. Therefore, he has to believe in God. Order! Order! Case is dismissed. Bailiff, you will remand Mr. Montrose in custody. My pleasure, Your Honor. You did it! It was the weirdest thing. I opened my briefcase. I was planning to bluff him, but the actual file was right there. That's the nature of celestial lawyers. Whatever supporting documentation you require is at hand. I can get used to this. Really? Absolutely not. But at least it's better than being down there. I'm sorry, Phil, but... Well, Philip... Congratulations. Thanks. I think congrats to everyone is in order. 
I told you I had faith in you, Philip. Uh, uh, God? Yes? Do I have to? Yes, Philip. I'm sorry. I understand. Until next time. We'd best get back to the elevator. Did God just say... Yes? So there will be a next time. Have faith, Phil. Nothing lasts forever. Will I see you again, Les? Count on it, Phil. Count on it. You have just listened to Phil Morris, Celestial Lawyer, with performances by Laura Burke as Lazarus, Jack Ward as Demon and Bailiff, Jake Willett as Phil Morris, Leela Shore as God, and David Chambers as Kenneth Montrose. Phil Morris was written and produced by Jack J. Ward. Engineering by David Judge. Theme and incidental music written and composed by Sharon B. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. This has been an Electric Vicuna production.